Welcome to Ansible Automates. Uh, this session is on F5 and Ansible to automate, scale, and secure your application delivery controllers. My name is Matt Quill, Senior Strategic Business Development Manager with F5. So just a little bit about uh, F5 and our technologies. In 2019, uh, we acquired Nginx, which really was our first major foray into the open source world. Uh, the Nginx web server is by far and away the most widely used web server in the world. Uh, but what they also uh, have as an add-on feature is Nginx Plus and the advanced uh, load balancing capabilities inherent from that. Nginx App Protect, uh, which provides uh, WAF-like protection or WAF protection against uh, Layer 7 attacks. Uh, and Nginx API Gateway. Uh, moving further to the right, we'll see that, that we have sort of a control plane uh, product called Big I, uh, Q, which manages our Big IP platform, which is widely known. Uh, we have over 25,000 customers generating uh, tremendous amounts of value uh, for core load balancing technologies, as well as uh, security, uh, DNS load balancing, things like that. Now, another feature of F5 or another uh, offering in F5 is sort of consumption models that have changed. We've moved from a monolithic hardware-based company, which is still a big part of our business, but we've also expanded into software and different consumption models. Uh, so uh, either from a subscription-based perspective or as a service, and you'll see more of that as we start start to sort of expand our list of offerings. You'll have the ability to buy our traditional hardware, uh, which goes all the way up to terabit type of throughput, to uh, our uh, microservices load balancing products, uh, which are software only, uh, most notably Nginx Plus, to our as a service offerings, uh, which will be expanding over time. We call this overall the code to customer journey, but in order to sort of uh, meet in all these different areas, whether that's software as a service, in the container space with OpenShift, uh, in public cloud, hybrid cloud, private cloud, we really need and require our ecosystem advantages and our ecosystem integrations. And the most notable of that is Ansible. And Ansible automation has been a critical part of F5's transformation from a traditional, let's say legacy hardware company to a software company that sort of meets the customer where they are on their journey, whether that's uh, in developing a private cloud, developing a hybrid cloud strategy, looking to automate everything in their legacy infrastructure. Um, anywhere that the customer needs to, to sort of go to progress and become more efficient, Ansible Automation is a crucial part of that. And we're gonna talk about some use cases and then get into uh, some of the security things that I think are quite exciting, uh, some of the security automation use cases that we've built out. So what is F5 Network? Simply put, we're the de facto platform for load balancing, layer four to layer seven uh, application provisioning, and then security. So anything that happens to layer four to layer seven in the OSI stack, uh, F5 is a big part of that. We were really one of the first adopters of Ansible automation in the networking space. Uh, so automation was making substantial inroads in server security, what have you, and networking was really an open field or a greenfield area for Ansible as an organization. F5 understood that as customers were moving to become more agile, for lack of a better term, that they needed to automate first. And automation is really one of the key preconditions becoming more efficient as an organization. And so as you start to automate, you start to look at more complex processes and procedures in your IT organization to automate. And one of those very sort of higher hanging fruits, as opposed to server storage and server, uh, is the networking stack, whether that's switches and routing or uh, F5 ADCs, so application delivery controllers, which include load balancing, application firewall, traditional layer four firewall, whatever, whatever you think of in that area. 
We're also committed to open source with our Nginx and have built a lot of Galaxy templates and collections for Nginx controller, which I'll discuss shortly. Ansible far and away uh, is sort of the leader in this application, in this automation space. F5 has made substantial investments uh, in making sure that we have certified uh, playbooks and mo modules and playbooks uh, with Ansible uh, so that you can automate most common to most complex uh, use cases or functions within the environment. Uh, we have a lot of developers using Big IP, Big IQ, and our new AS3 uh, declarative uh, model of uh, automation. Uh, but you have the ability to serve using use uh, certified F5 roles. So the competitive edge, obviously, F5 and Ansible working closely together to develop uh, far and away the most modules for a networking platform uh, allows for you know inventory retrieval and configuration. So making sure that you have a consistent uh, state of your environment, whether it's patching, uh, OS upgrades, uh, things like that. Uh, iteration over specific network segments, uh, credential management with Tower Vault, state checking and validation. So in, in working with Tower to be that central source of truth for your entire infrastructure becomes really important. So comparing running configs to the desired F5 state, Tower becomes important to sort of be that key point of truth and executing F5 playbooks with flexibility. Obviously, no, no integration, no configuration in any individual IT shop is the same, but it's important that we uh, have these integrations there. And it's important also to understand that our API, our REST-based API is fully described and we use that fully. We're not usually using sort of our CLI type commands, but we have a fully described uh, REST uh, API uh, that allows for customers to do anything uh, on the big IP via this API. And Ansible is a key piece in helping that. Uh, continuous compliance, so making sure that you have stateful validation and logging and ag ag aggregation. So F5 and Ansible, or F5 has really used Ansible as its, its default and has made substantial investments in that place as has Ansible to ensure um, that uh, we have the ability for customers to use Ansible end-to-end -end in configuring, monitoring their Nginx and Big IP environments. We currently have 170 plus modules available. Uh, if you want some module information, uh, you can look at our cloud doc site, so cloudDocs.f5.com, uh, and you'll also see the collection support. So we now have certified collections up there, and I'll talk about that on the next slide. But we've done substantial work together to make sure this is, uh, this has happened so that F5 is kind of fully automatable uh, through Ansible. So we now have uh, this feature and we've kind of aligned our strategy, our development strategy with Ansible's, right? Previously, uh, Ansible had integrations uh, or F5 module integrations into uh, its product uh, and that was a source of, you know, or basically lessened both organizations' agility. So the plan was to develop collections uh, uh, with Ansible, upload them to Ansible Automation Hubs. Hub. So those who are, you know, Tower uh, subscribers, people who have bought Tower subscriptions, can now use F5 certified collections uh, uh, from Automation Hub in, in a repeatable and supported manner. This allows Ansible uh, to continue with its development progress and to come out with new releases on their cadence. But we can also add new collections at our cadence. So as new use cases come up, uh, new customer demands and customer requirements come up, we can move uh, sort of in an asynchronous manner, but ensure that end-to-end -end, these are supported configurations and integrations. Uh, we work together with Ansible and Red Hat more generally uh, through TSA net, so there's mutual support. And we've also made product development uh, QA uh, integrations into Ansible to make sure uh, that customers have that assurance that Ansible collections uh, are 
uh, there and support it. And you can log a ticket if there's a problem. We will sort of help to broker uh, those relationships. So I want to talk a little bit about use cases. Now, I mentioned basically Big IQ as our management platform, but this is sort of a complementary uh, product. And really, Big IQ helps to address uh, a challenge uh, that uh, larger enterprises and, and you know mid-sized uh, users of Big IP have, and that is that many customers have gone from sort of our big iron chassis-based uh, platforms to a mix or a hybrid mix of different types of form factors, whether that's uh, just standard 1U appliances, so they've gone from chassis-based systems to uh, appliances, or a mixture of chassis, one, smaller appliances, and big IPVEs. As well, many customers are also moving out to public cloud. Obviously, public cloud is exploding. Uh, organizations are started in order to move faster, are relying on public cloud infrastructure more uh, more commonly. So having bridging the divide between the public and private or on-premises environment and the public cloud is important. So Big IQ plays that vital function for license management, upgrades, things of that nature. And what you can do is use Big IQ as that sort of uh, funneling point through which all updates and configurations can be managed. So you have sort of your playbooks on your Ansible host. They can sort of become app templates on Big IQ and they can be deployed to the various devices and appliances throughout your environment. So the use cases are, you know, Big IP licensing, layer four through seven application services. And that really starts from core load balancing policies and, and things like that to sort of higher level layer four through seven, layer seven type uh, things with our advanced WAP functionality. Uh, big IP onboarding, including making, ensuring high availability between big IP uh, devices or VEs and drive sort of infrastructure as code migration. So the ability to sort of make repeatable conf uh, consistent configurations in your environment uh, to drive infrastructure as code. Um, so what this means is that as organizations have shifted uh, to uh, agile development processes, okay, which means that they need to sort of move fast, test their code and development, and make configurations as automated as possible so that they can stand up new configs, test new configs, tear them down, make changes, adopt methods like blue, green, and canary type agile deployment methods. We have a number of different repositories or tools that need to be used uh, in combination with the big IP. But the first thing in adopting Agile is everything has to be automated. There can't be uh, lots of complex manual intervention when you're doing Agile development. And so Ansible automation becomes an important part of that in that you can ensure consistency, you can ensure uh, source of truth, uh, reliable centralized source of truth, but also move fast uh, and sort of twist all of the knobs or pre-configure all of the integrations that you need, whether that's you know, code repositories like GitHub, Jenkins, uh, with Ansible, um, Ansible, and then configuring the F5 for multiple environments, development, test, and production. All of this can be automated and described through Ansible and then can be deployed across clouds, across environments, across form factors, whether that's a physical, uh, server type environment, a virtualized environment, or a containerized environment, which is really uh, gaining critical mass as, uh, as agile development becomes more and more important, more and more important part of organizations than using automation in concert with agile development best practices is crucial. So I want to now pivot and talk about sort of our, the bleeding edge of security automation. Now, security is one of those things that really is, is difficult to manage, obviously, because you're incurring risk when you're sort of doing security best practices. But you need to sort of look at, why do I want to automate security? Well, the first thing is sort of streamlining repeatable tasks. So automating repeatable tasks in, in an environment and making sure that you streamline that process. You want to eliminate inefficient investigations, so make sure that 
that you know you avoid managing hundreds of point solutions. You want to accelerate the response time. So obviously, if there's a threat, or if there's you know SQL injection, cross-site scripting, credential stuffing, all of those types of uh, attack vectors, you want to be able to respond in real time or near real time, and then optimize ROI T TCO. Security operations and security management is probably the most crucial part of the enterprise. If your IT assets are not secured, uh, then you may not be in business or your business may incur a substantial financial uh, hit if something is compromised in your environment. However, having a very hardened security posture within an IT organization is very, very complicated and sometimes often very expensive and manual. So you want to optimize ROI TCO and do it in a repeatable manner uh, without uh, breaking things or, or exposing yourself to unnecessary risk. So why is Ansible security automation? Why did Ansible start to move into security automation and really start to promote that? Well, you know, 5% of the alerts coming in, the average security can team can only examine 5% of those alerts. So a lot of stuff is coming inbound that a security team can't manually respond to in real time. This poses a risk for your organization uh, because there are lots of attack factors. There are organizations, especially large organizations, constantly under attack uh, from different malicious actors and bots, what have you. You know, the time to resolve uh, an incident, an individual incident has grown. We see the reported increased severity of attacks. So obviously, if you've been reading the news in the December timeframe, you saw the, the solar winds debacle and all of the, those fairly, you know, devastating attacks, uh, but there, these are cyber attacks from bad actors, whether they are countries or individuals, are becoming uh, more, more and more sophisticated, and the severity is becoming increased. Um, and only 29% have their ideal security uh, staffing level. So it's much harder to respond in real time. So automation really has to be at the forefront of any sort of security posture where the most common threats are identified and mitigated in real time or as close to real time as possible so that your security team can deal with some of those more complex uh, security threats. So how does it work? So that we used in this case uh, our F5 advanced WAF, uh, uh, which is our layer seven firewall. You know, if for example, and we worked with Elastic uh, to sort of put this together. Um, so if an alert is not blocked by our WAF and the source or geolocation in this particular example or is uh, North Korea or China or Russia or and, and if the alert error is critical, then you execute the playbook that applies an AWAF policy um, to sort of put it in blocking modes. If it's in monitoring mode, it, it triggers the alert and then it automatically executes an a Ansible playbook to update the existing AWAP policy and enforce it or change it from transparent to blocking on this particular uh, event. This is important because as I mentioned in the previous slide, most of these alerts cannot be examined by individuals on the team. So you're looking at uh, most common conditions and you're blocking them automatically and then allowing for the security team to examine them out of band. So this is sort of how it works. You know, you have the export of the net network telemetry data, IP bytes in and out, HTTP info, WAF info, reputation info, geolocation info. So all the things that might trigger an alert and a blocking policy, Elasticsearch and Logstash are sort of looking at the data and indexing the data. It's modifying the data and then uh, forwards it to Elasticsearch. You can visualize the data, data meets the condition and then it will execute the playbook and will update the policy via Ansible of the WAF. So the WAF will then be put into blocking. But this sort of is an automated security use case that we'd like to present to customers. Obviously, we can look at a number of different scenarios whereby F5 Tenec technologies, F5 AWAF, as well as Nginx App Protect can work in concert. But this is a simple example of how this would work together. 
I'd like to now turn to resources that might be available or, or are available to you. Um, F5.com uh, forward slash Ansible is our landing page, which will cover all of the integrations that we have. Um, you can look at Ansible.com uh, forward slash F5 for uh, details on our integrations. We have multiple uh, uh, information on Ansible Galaxy. So this is kind of the open source Wild West. But I would also uh, direct you to Ansible Automation Hub, where you can find sort of the certified collections that we've built uh, with, uh, with uh, Ansible. Uh, some more information. I would like to offer uh, to you uh, our workshops. We, we run uh, an Ansible Essentials or a 101 workshop, and then an advanced topic uh, on a quarterly basis. Uh, we will be running these labs at our upcoming agility event, but we also run them on a quarterly basis. So look at the F5 website for events. Uh, but we can also, if your organization is large enough and we can get together you know, 20 people in a room that would like to sort of pursue that, I would encourage you to reach out uh, to your F5 team and we can sort of put together and deliver a workshop and even customize it somewhat to your needs. Um, so that's an important uh, opportunity for you to make avail yourself of. And I'd also encourage you to look at the NetOps.DevOps ebook that we've developed, uh, which is you know, out and available on the web page. So that's uh, it. My name is Matt Quill. Please uh, feel free to reach out uh, or follow us. And thank you for your time.